In this video, we are going to look at how to sketch transformations of the tangent function. Many of the principles and strategies that we used for sine and cosine transformations will apply here as well. Let's start with vertical shifts. This is generally the easy one. As an example, let's consider the function f of theta equals the tangent of theta plus 2. Since the 2 is being added outside of the tangent function, it will be a vertical shift. Shifting our entire base tangent graph up two places. From a graphing perspective then, what's important here? Well, originally our graph of just f of theta went from negative infinity up to positive infinity between our negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and it went right through the x-axis in the middle of that wave. If we sketch or shift that graph up 2, that wave will move up, and the middle of the wave will pass through the point 0, 2 instead. The location of the asymptotes all stay the same. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, next let's consider the function f of theta equals 2 times the tangent of theta. Since the 2 is being multiplied outside of the tangent function, it will reflect a vertical stretch. We still have asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The graph still passes through the origin in the middle. However, it needs to increase twice as fast. It's hard to do a quick sketch if you don't have two points to start with. How far up do you stretch? With the base tangent graph, we know that it goes through the origin right there. A second good point to know is that tangent of pi over 4 equals 1. This is a great and easy point to remember because it's halfway between the origin and pi over 2 asymptote, and 1 is just such a nice y value to work with. So if we want 2 times tangent of theta, then we're going to still keep the origin point and stretch up to the point pi over 2, or pi over 4, 2, instead of pi over 4, 1. We still need to head up quickly towards infinity to meet the asymptote by pi over 2. Then use symmetry to fill in the matching upside down wave to the left of the y-axis. That makes a full period. Then we can make as many more of these as we want. Repeating every pi since pi is the period. Time for yet another example. This time, let's consider the function f of theta equals the tangent of pi over 3 theta. This time, our transformation involves multiplying by pi over 3 inside of the tangent function. So this will correspond to a horizontal stretch or compression. In trigonometry lingo, that means that the period is going to change. If you think back to graphing sine and cosine functions, finding the period required a little bit of work. We used that b value that's multiplied inside the function and could calculate the new period by doing 2 pi over b. Since the original period of the tangent is pi, not 2 pi, we calculate the modified period of a tangent function by just doing pi over b.
In our example, the value of b affecting the period of the function is pi over 3. Think of this as pi over pi over 3. That's pi over 1 divided by pi over 3. Then times by the reciprocal of the complex fraction to get pi over 1 times 3 over pi. In this case, the pi's cancel, and we're left with 3 over 1. So the period of our new tangent function is going to be 3. A new period means the asymptotes are now going to be occurring at different locations. With our standard tangent graph, the period was pi. Our center was at the origin, so half of the period was above the origin and half below, which got us asymptotes at pi over 2 and at negative pi over 2. In this case, our new period is 3. There are no horizontal shifts, so we're still centered at the origin with half of our period above the origin and half below the origin. With a period of 3, that means the asymptote will be located at 1.5 to the right of the y-axis, and another asymptote will be located at negative 1.5 to the left of the y-axis. Then we can sketch in our standard tangent graph, stretching up to infinity near the 1.5 asymptote, and stretching down to negative infinity near the negative 1.5 asymptote. If we want more cycles or periods in our graph, we can find additional asymptotes by adding or subtracting 3. So we'd have an asymptote at x equals 1.5 plus 3, or 4.5, and we can sketch a full cycle of the tangent. If we wanted to do another wave, we could add, uh, add 1.5 again and come out to 6 for yet another asymptote. You could do a similar thing by subtracting 3 to get additional asymptotes to the left of the x-axis. So a little more thinking with the tangent when you need to have a b value affecting your graph. Remember, to calculate the new period, you have to use pi over b when you're working with tangent. Then to sketch the asymptotes, you need to go half above the amount of the period and half below the amount of the period to the left and the right of the y-axis. Just a word of warning about the order of transformations when you make these graphs. If you have more than one thing going on, say for example you're asked to graph something like 3 tangent of pi over 4 theta minus 2. If you have more than one thing going on, it's important to do all of the stretches and compressions first. I like to do any vertical stretch values first. The numbers multiplied outside the function. Then the horizontal stretches. Those numbers multiplied inside the function. Then I can deal with any horizontal or vertical shifts after. This way I can use the origin and the pi over 4 comma 1 point as the x, as, and the y-axis as reference points for my changes. Then by doing the vertical shifts last, I can move the final graph around. Hope that helps. Have fun with your graphing.